Hi, my name is Julianne Cost. Welcome to this episode of The Complete Picture. Today I thought we'd take a look at the develop module in Lightroom and see how we might enhance our photographs by kind of changing the color temperature of the light and also using uh, the ability to dodge and burn with our selective adjustments and the graduated filter in order to kind of add some light into the image and, and really shape the image and make it look more interesting. Now, Obviously, if you have the opportunity, the best time to do that is while you're capturing, but you know, sometimes you'll find yourself in a, in a beautiful location and the light just isn't quite right, and unfortunately we can't always stay until that light um, just hits that perfect moment. So these will be some great tips and techniques as to how you can kind of finish your images, enhance them, make them a little bit better using the develop module in Lightroom. So let's go ahead and scoot on over there. I'll tap the D key to go to the develop module. And you can see I've cleared away or I've hidden my, my side panels. And you can do that by just tapping the tab key. If I tap the tab key again, they'll come back, tapping it again. And that just gives me a little bit more room to, to work. So I'm also going to tap the Y key. And the Y key is going to give me a before and after view. You can see here that it split the screen, but we do have a bunch of different options down here if I wanted to change this. But for right now, let's look at the before versus after. So we can see, for example, in this image, I've really changed the, the tone of the image by changing the white balance or the color balance. I've made it look a lot warmer over here. I've also darkened down the sky at the top and added a little bit of a um, dark area down here in the foreground to kind of draw your eye into the photograph. I've also darkened down the sides here, again, to keep your eye within the photograph. And then I've dodged and burned a little bit on these mountains just to make them a little bit more interesting and also to give a little bit more depth to the image. All right, looking at some of the other images, this first image right here, I think the biggest difference really, you can see that that straightening out the lighthouse really helped. This was obviously shot with a wide angle lens, so as we just use the new lens correction, we really can, can straighten those lines and it's much more pleasing to look at. Plus again, instead of being so blue as was shot and, and taken straight out of camera, we've warmed that up a little bit on the after image. Here in this image, I've just added a little bit more contrast to make the image look a little bit more dramatic. And the reason that I did that was because here you've got this just great expansive scene where it just it seems to go on forever and ever. So how can I accentuate that? Well, one of the ways is to darken down the clouds here, keeping your eye in the frame, and lightening the horizon here so that, again, we're adding more depth. And then in the foreground here, lightening up a little bit of an area here just to add some interest, and also removing the sign here. You'll notice that's gone from the after image because it's just a distracting element. We don't need it, therefore I can just take that right out. In this image of the iceberg here, obviously I've increased my exposure quite dramatically. Again, that probably would have been better done in camera, but in this case I did it after the fact. Also added a little bit of saturation down in here. And we'll definitely, um, I'll show you how to correct this image or how to make this change because this is a great little technique. I mean, obviously when I was at this location, the light just wasn't cooperating and there was no light in the foreground here. So in Lightroom, using the graduated filter, actually using multiple graduated filters, we can go ahead and enhance that rock and really make that much more dramatic and, and pop that area there, as well as bring down um, this side of the sky and bring up the saturation here in the mountains. Now, I could have made these a little bit more um, contrasting, maybe made them a little bit clearer, but don't forget, when, when you want something to recede into the background and you want that depth to your image, things are going to get a little bit softer as we go back further. If I make them just as sharp and in focus as the foreground, I'm not going to get that same depth to my image. And finally, this last image here, I think you can really see um, I've pulled your eye into the center of the image by brightening up the center. I've also darkened down the edges. Although I didn't do it with a vignette, I did it with dodging and burning. And if you look closely, for example, this rock has really been toned down. So I've gone in and selectively dodged and burned this image to make sure that you really are concentrating so that your eye doesn't go off the outside, but you're concentrating on the center of the image. All right, so in each one of these, I'm just going to show kind of a few of the major steps so that you get a feel for, for what I'm doing and what we're, we're thinking here. So I'll tap the Y key again so that we can just see the single image. Tap the tab keys to bring back our panels. I can actually hide the panel on the left side if we don't want to see that. That'll just give us a little bit more space there. 
And then let's reset this image. Now what I want to show you here is what I did in the lens correction. This is kind of curious. You'll notice that I hit the reset button, but the enable profile corrections is on. And that's because in every single image, I want to correct any lens distortion. So what I did is I just brought an image into the develop module, made no other changes to it except to enable the profile correction. Then I went under the develop menu up here and I set that as my default setting. So every time I take a photograph with this camera and lens combination, Lightroom is going to automatically enable the lens correction for me. Excellent. Now, the lens profile correction is applied, so we've removed the distortion in the lens, but I also need to go over to the manual area right here. Clicking on manual, now I have the option to make changes. For example, I can go in and change the vertical distortion and straighten up the lines of the lighthouse, which is just going to make it much more pleasing to look at. You'll notice when I do that, though, I get this gray area around my image, so it helps if I just click on the constrained crop, and then Lightroom will automatically crop out any of the areas that don't contain any information. Then we can go back up here, right up to the basic panel, use my temperature and tint slider and just slide that over a little bit to the right, kind of warming up the image. Now, we could also use the adjustment brush and the graduated filter, but let's move to the next image to do that. In fact, let's move to this image because I think this is kind of the most dramatic use of this technique. So again, I'll click the reset button just to get us back to the start. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use two of the graduated filters. So I'll select it here and we get all these different options. And what I want to do is I want to lighten an area. So I'm going to increase my exposure. And let's make it really dramatic for now. Let's make it like, um, let's make it a half a stop. So 0.5. And then what I'll do is I'll click and drag up to lighten this area. And just in case you couldn't see it, here's what I'm doing here. I, I'm bringing the exposure all the way over to 4 just to make sure that we can see it. And I'll just bring that up a little bit more until I know that I've got the light in the right place, and then I'll just tone it down a bit. But here's the thing. When I increased this, the amount of light, or when I increased the exposure here with the graduated filter, it's also increasing the exposure down here. But all I need to do to correct that is actually add the inverse, right? So here I've got 1.72 um, for an increase in exposure. So let's click the new button right here. And this time I'm going to take it in the other direction to 1.72 or somewhere thereabouts. And then click and drag up to darken down that foreground. And don't forget, you know, once you click and drag this, you can always click on the pin in order to reposition it. If I wanted to change the angle, just move your cursor over to the side, and you'll notice that I'm clicking way out to the side because if you click really close to the pin, it gets a little wild and crazy. It's hard to control, but if you go out further from that center point that it's rotating on, you're going to get a lot more finer control over that. And then, of course, we can click on either the top or the bottom line if we wanted to extend or compress that gradient there, that graduated filter. And we don't just have to change exposure, right? There's all sorts of settings here that we could change. So for example, we can use that exact same technique in that I'm going to use the two graduated filters, but I could change saturation in this image. So let's double click on, re on exposure because that'll reset exposure. We'll bring up saturation. And then I'll double click on the reset button down here so that we can reset the file so that you can see what's going to happen when I click and drag up with the saturation. So we see now that I'm getting a lot more saturation in this area down here. We could also increase exposure if we wanted to. And then we just kind of remember those values, create a new graduated adjustment, decrease the exposure, and maybe decrease the saturation or just remove the saturation, and click and drag up our secondary adjustment. The exposure here obviously is way too much though, so let's go ahead and bring that down a little bit. Okay, so now you can see, look at the difference. If we just tap the backslash key, that's the before and after, but you can see how just adding a little bit of light, and I think that's actually too much, but I want to make sure you can see it. Adding just a little bit of light there 
to, to that reflection and then also just adding a little bit more saturation really kind of draws your attention to that area. Okay, finally we'll just go to this image for one moment because this is the image that I use not only the ability to clone and heal but also the adjustment brush. So here with the ability to clone and heal I can tap the H key and we can actually see everywhere that I've healed. So all these white dots, well if I select one and we delete it, you can see that I'm hiding something there. I'm hiding something that's distracting. That was the whole goal here. I'm trying to remove, I'm trying to eliminate your eye from jetting off in all these little directions where there's pieces of light. So all we need to do is use the right bracket key that gets us a little bit bigger of a clone or heal spot here and then we can just click and Lightroom will automatically select a sample area. Now if you want to change that obviously we can click and drag around to change where Lightroom sampling from and we can tap the H key to hide the sampling area so that we can see whether or not it's doing a good job or if it's seamless or not. See look at I can just scoot this around until I find something that I like. That kind of looks more like that rock shape so I'll go ahead and set it right there. And I've also used my adjustment brush here. And if we move my cursor into the area, see how when I move my cursor into the image area, we can see the pen. So this is the pen that I've set down. And look at how many little um, paint strokes I've made. Anywhere that the rock was light, I went ahead and I clicked and, and brushed over it. And you can see there, right over here, my exposure is set to point a negative 0.89 so I'm burning down those areas and if I want to I can tap the O key and that will show the overlay basically the mask that I'm painting all those areas that I've been darkening down and adjusting it shows those in fact um, shift O will change the color of that so if you prefer a different color you can do that but I just prefer um, that red looks just fine to me so I usually leave that up tapping the O key again obviously gets rid of that so those are a few of the different tools in, in Lightroom. You can use the adjustment brush in order to dodge and burn and add light. That not only is good for burning, but also for dodging. You can see here I have quite a few adjustment brushes here. In fact, we can toggle off the effects here by using this little light switch at the bottom of the panel. So that's before and that's after of just the adjustment brush. So it doesn't include any of my other, um, maybe the graduated uh, filters or anything else that I've applied to it. But as you can see, by dodging and burning with the adjustment brush, by going in with a graduated filter and selectively darkening and lightening different areas, and also, of course, by using the basic panel to make um, other adjustments such as white balance, temperature, and tint, you can really start to shape the light in your image and enhance the image and, and maybe look, make it look a little bit warmer and friendlier than perhaps the moment that you were able to photograph the picture in the first place. Excellent. That wraps up this episode of The Complete Picture. My name is Julianne Koss. Thanks for joining me and I hope these techniques in the Develop Module of Lightroom enable you to enhance and shape the light in your photography. Mm -hmm.